Welcome to another edition of Our City. A few things going around the city of Elizabeth this week. On Thursday, October 17th at 11 o'clock, I'm going to attend a celebration at the Peterstown Community Center in honor of Red Ribbon Week, which is an alcohol, tobacco, and other drug and violence prevention awareness campaign, and it observes here in the city of Elizabeth on that day, but it also is held across the United States of America. Later that evening, the 78th annual Honor Guard Dinner, uh, the Polish Legion of American Veterans, located on Greer Avenue and Allen Street. We're one of the few cities in the country that has dedicated veterans from the police and fire departments that ha formed an Honor Guard, that if a veteran passes away in our city, the Honor Guard will be there at the funeral. On Friday, October 18th at 6 o'clock, there will be a Homecoming Queen pageant reception at the Thomas Edison Career and Technical Academy Tea Room, followed by a football game from Elizabeth High School, where the Queen will be presented uh, in the beginning or at halftime. I urge you to attend and congratulate the young ladies who have competed in this competition. If you need more information concerning these events or any other events, please call our public information office at 820-4124. And for this week's show, I am pleased to be joined by Mr. Jason Kalinske, who's a CFPA certified financial planner professional. And every year for the last 10 years, we've been holding Financial Day in the city of Elizabeth. And this is the 2013 Financial Day. And Jason, you've been involved in them in the past. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Mayor. Nice to so, meet you. So first of all, Jason, tell us a little about yourself. Well, um, I grew up in New York and then I actually transplanted to Bergen County when my parents moved uh, in about seven years ago. I graduated from Ramapo College in 2010 with a degree in finance. I always really knew I was going to be in the financial planning industry. My, my father actually is a financial planner and, and we work together. Um, you know, when I was a, in high school, I would go hang out over the summer times and ask questions about planning. So I kind of always knew it's what I wanted to do. So I finished school locally. So you went to work with dad? Yeah, went yeah. to work with dad. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, I knew that I needed to get more of a, a background, and one of the ways to do that is is going out and, and becoming a certified financial planner. So I went through all the schooling. There's kind of a rigorous, you know, exam and education that goes about it, and uh, finished up that last year, and became a CFP in uh, October. So, of what's your degree at from Ramapo? Finance. So I just got finance. a regular bachelor's in science. They didn't have a financial planning track like some schools do, but I got a basic finance. Background. Now, a certified financial planner. Do you got to take like a Series Seven, Series whatever they're called? So. So yes, so in, in order to sell securities and, and do certain things, you have to be Series 7 licensed and Series 65 licensed. But what a CFP is basically, uh, you have to go and take an education program. There, there's a five ex course, uh, you know, uh, I guess, program you have to go through. Once you take those five courses, then what happens is you can actually take a, a national exam, which is only given three times a year. It's, it's a test of about 200 some odd questions. It's pass fail, but you have to get at least a 70 on it. So if you don't pass that exam, you have to keep taking it until you actually pass. Um, once you do pass the exam, though, then you actually have to do an experience, amount of experience. So because of the fact that I had been working with my dad all throughout college, I actually had the three years of experience that you needed. But a lot of times planners will take the exam, and then they're actually not allowed to say they're CFPs until they actually have the three years of experience. So I did all three of those. So I was able to give myself the marks and basically become a CFP. So for, I learned something new. So, so the Certified Financial Planner is a national certification, not yes. a state certification. Yeah, it's a national certification. There's only about 70,000 CFPs. Um, I, I'm proud of myself as one of the only 2,000 below the age of 30. So I think that's kind of, you know, it's kind of cool. It makes me feel pretty good about that. But, yeah, it's, it's completely separate than, you know, just getting a license, like insurance license or a securities license. It's an actual, there's a... Board of Directors, CFP Board of Directors, they run it, and you have to abide by it. So you, don't, you don't get licensed by the state then? You're, it's, it's national certification? Correct, yeah. Okay. And uh, we have a financial planning day here in the city of Elizabeth, and you haven't participated in ours, you told us, but you've participated in others. Correct. So tell us what a uh, financial day is in the city of Elizabeth. So, yeah, the, the, the financial planning day, it's a, it's, a great, it's a great day. I mean, I really enjoy it. it. It's really, it's, you know, when people, first of all, it's nationwide. Uh, it's put together by the U.S. Uh, Conference of Mayors, um, the CFP Board, uh, also the Financial Planning Association, and I believe the other uh, organization is the Founda Foundation of Financial Planning. So all four of those groups got together, and they wanted to be able to create a way for individuals who may not necessarily have access to planners for free to be able to come out and, and meet with us one-on-one -on -one and in group settings. And basically, to, you know, to really go over anything, whether it's 
college planning or they're concerned about credit card debt or questions about retirement or just how to put an emergency fund away, um, they can come on down and they get a chance to sit with us and, and really, you know, get a, get a good so one on one. what do you tell a person with, with credit card debt? Stop spending? No, well, I, you know, <laughs> it, it's difficult. A lot of times, you know, we try to give them some sort of takeaway so they can leave there feeling at least that they have some sort of advice. But, you know, when someone has credit card debt, a lot of times I'll say to them, listen, it's better than paying nothing. You know, a lot of times come in and they're, they're pay, you know, they talk to me, they're paying zero. And what I say to them is, listen, you know, the economy where we are, it, it's, we've been through a lot. The whole world's been through a lot, the country. And at least pay something. If it's not the minimum, at least you're showing the credit card companies a lot of times that you're willing to pay something. And I've seen situations where you can contact the credit card company direct and say to them, listen, this is my situation, and they'll work something out with you. But if you try to, you know, if you decide, choose to ignore it and just not pay anything, that's when you run into issues and they really come after you. So credit card companies would actually take less than the minimum if you called and Absolutely. tried to work? They would. Yeah, it's, you know, because think of it from their point of view. I mean, they have millions of dollars of, of not, not paid credit card debt. And someone who's willing to pay something, to them, it's better than getting nothing. So we're in a different world than we used to be in. I mean, a lot of people, I think the average American carries twenty, thirty thousand 30000 in credit card debt. So they, they want to get paid. Well, I'm not that average American then because <laughs> I'm nowhere near that. But how, do, how does a, uh, how does... How do the people deal with credit card debt? And if you if they pay a little bit, right. do it's up to them to make the phone call, or do they hire people like you to make the phone calls to these folks? Or how does that work? I'd say you know if they're let's say they're not comfortable with with making that phone call, there are organizations out there where you can hire them and they'll help you consolidate your debt. Um, you have to be careful as to vetting the proper organization because I'm sure there are some out There's there. There's probably some scams. Yeah, there, I'm, right? I'm sure there is. But it, you can find organizations where basically they'll assist you with that process. But it's, I, I, if, to me, it's, it's more of just make a phone call. I mean, you can contact your credit card company, the 800 number on the statement. Tell them you have, you know, you'd like to speak with somebody about your outstanding balance and see if you can get a dialogue going. And the city, how long have we been doing this? We've been doing it. If uh, I believe the city of Elizabeth is in its fourth year right. i may not be it may not be correct but overall there's been 96 financial planning days so now that's across the country um that's between i believe 2010 and 2013 and this is the 96th one so it's really kind of catching on and becoming more prevalent all over the country which i think is great well i'm active with the u.s conference of mayors sure. and they're the ones where i first got the idea from uh, a couple of years back and mm -hmm. i know some of the big cities are doing it who do we expect to come to these events I think it's anybody, you know, I, I think it, it could be a mom, it could be a, a, a you know, working blue collar worker, it could be a doctor, lawyer, I mean, anybody who really has questions about their finances. Um, I think a lot of times it, it's individuals who really just have never dealt with a planner before. I know last year when I sat down with people, a lot of times this was their first time, you know, sitting with a planner and they really weren't too sure about how, you know, how the process works. And I think people also come in and you have to make them feel, you know, good that you're not trying to sell them anything. I mean, you want to make sure that they understand that we're really here to help them. We're not trying to, you know, make, you know, make, a, make a sale. So there is no like pitch that. to sell anything at no, these No, not at all. I mean, actually, one of the, one of the uh, things that you have to do ahead of time is basically, as the planner, I have to, you know, tell them that listen we're not this is not a sales pitch i'm not trying i'm not allowed to give you uh any of my business cards unless you ask me for it um none of that there's not supposed to be any of that going on so it's, it's really just if you have a question we're a professional let us help you so what what else does the event consist of besides just financial planners sure what so, else goes on there so there's going to be there's going to be some group presentations so not just a one-on-one -on -one with a planner, but there's going to be presentations. I know this year it's going to be on home, home ownership, budgeting, and retirement are some of the, the topics. Uh, there's also going to be local resources. There's going to be some organizations there. For instance, Brand New Day Inc. is going to be there, uh, the Urban League, Proceed, Retail Skills Center, uh, the Elizabeth Home Improvement Program, YMCA, and as well as the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development. They'll all have booths there so people can go and talk to them and, and get information from all those other organizations. And uh, the advertisement that we do to get people there, d depending on the weather, I guess, how many people show up? <laughs> well, I, I got so going on my past life? experience, last year I was in Newark. Mm -hmm. um, I think we had well over 100 people attend. Some people did want to meet with the planners one-on-one. -on -one. Some people just showed up for the group presentations. Um, nice thing is there, there's some light refreshments, so you do you know get to enjoy yourself a little bit. Um, um, I also think we do give a, a, a takeaway, so you actually will leave there with a bag full of resources, you know, things just about all sorts of different types of financial topics, so you can kind of so leave you, home. So these the boost you mentioned, no, nothing deals with foreclosure though at a, at a financial planning day. Uh, I'm not sure. I, I think 
that, that you might be correct. There may be somebody there. I, I don't know the home improvement program. I'm not sure what that yeah, they, is they, specifically. They can give you advice anyway. Okay. Yeah. I know I know. last year at the financial planning day, I did see two, at least two or three organizations there that were talking about foreclosure because okay. that was a big topic. I mean, a lot of people are either in foreclosure, foreclosure or they're wanting to know about what that consists of. So there definitely were organizations there that they could talk now, about. Now, what kind of one-on-one -on -one consultations are – can you offer as a you know because you're not trying to get business so you're going sure. to see this person once and they're probably going to leave right so it's a little tough to have follow-up so what do you offer them what do you tell them you know i think what we want people to know is definitely come there prepared with with a question or a topic that you want to talk about um because that way if you come in and let's say specifically you want to talk about saving for your child's college education then we can give you some advice on you know what we feel would be a good way to go about doing that you know we can talk about you know putting a monthly savings program in place or maybe checking out a college 529 plan you know certain things like that so I, I definitely recommend people bringing a specific question or if they have a specific financial document that's another thing sometimes people come in and they want to show us uh, a financial document like a will or they want to show us something like uh, a, sometimes people do have budgets they want us to take a look at it and just give the, give our advice so I, I'd say definitely come prepared if you have something you mentioned a 529 plan are there better plans in different states in New Jersey or is New Jersey have one of the premier 529 plans so New Jersey has a good plan um, I would definitely say in other states they're not as great but New Jersey has a good one and what I try to recommend is you know you can get a, a small tax deduction if you use the New Jersey plan, which is nice. So if you choose to go directly to the to the New Jersey 529, you make sure you want to make sure you take advantage of that tax deduction. So if you put in you know a few a thousand dollars, I think it ends up being you can save you know fifty to hundred dollars in, in state income tax. Something Does like the that. New Jersey plan uh, guarantee you the principal, with, regardless of the market, or there's different there's different, different investments. Types. What ends up happening is you have all you have different investments to choose from, and they can some of them are. You know, they're, they're, they're mutual funds. They're set up as mutual funds. And, and what happens is you can choose if you want to be aggressive or moderate or conservative, something like that. And typically we'd say, you know, that's where you can get with a planner and we can kind of help you choose so you know what's going on with the money, how it's being invested. If you could stay with us, we're going to take a break, run some commercials, and come back and talk more about Certified right, Financial Blade. Please stay with us. There'll be more about day here in the city of Elizabeth.